Welcome to tier two of the Sea of Thieves Iceberg. We're going to continue to keep things short and sweet. As we go further down the list, things are going to get a little bit more obscure, and there'll be some spoilers if you haven't got super far in the game. There is a spoiler towards the end of tier two, so you have been warned. Starting off tier two, we have the ship's death bell. When your ship takes a lot of damage and you have a lot of water on board, your ship will often make this sound. This is the sound of your ship groaning and getting ready to sink. Now once your ship does sink, you'll get the ship's death bell, which sounds like this. This indicates to the player that your ship has indeed sunk and you will not have a respawn in that same area if you die. Now if your ship does sink, don't worry it's not the end of your session because it will respawn on a different part of the map. Next is harpoon and anchor turns. No matter what size ship you're in, or if you're in combat or just out sailing the sea, harpoons and anchor turns are a great way to maneuver your ship. An anchor turn is performed whenever you turn the ship's wheel all the way to the left or all the way to the right and then drop the anchor. Dropping the anchor with the wheel maxed out one way or the other will make your ship do a complete 180. As soon as your ship's all the way around, you can straighten out the wheel and get that anchor up and get moving again. This is useful, like I said, if you're in a battle or you know, if you pass the island you were meant to go to. Another great thing that all ships can use for maneuverability is harpoon turns. Now using this will require you to be close to an island or a rock or something solid that you can grab onto with the harpoon. And as you're sailing by whatever object you decided to grab, as soon as that harpoon line tightens up, It'll begin to pull the ship whichever direction the harpoon is in. Now you can use this around islands, or if you're in combat, you can use it to get out of a sticky situation. But just keep in mind, the other ship has harpoons too, and they'll likely follow your lead. Now this next one, I've seen a lot of arguments about on social media. And to be honest, it doesn't quite make sense, but it is in fact in the game. Sloops are indeed the fastest ship going into the wind. As a way to balance out the mechanics between the galleon, the brigantine, and the sloop, the galleon is the fastest ship in the game with the wind at your back, pointing your flags forward. The Brigantine is the fastest ship in the game with a side wind pointing your flag sideways. And to balance things out, the sloop is the fastest going directly into the wind with your flag pointing backwards. Just make sure that if you are sailing your sloop into the wind, then you have your sails completely squared up to your ship. Let's talk about getting black screen. Sometimes on Sea of Thieves, you'll get stuck, say for instance, between two rocks or maybe between two palm trees, or you'll fall in a place to where you can't get your character out. This will lead the game to basically default to respawning you on your ship. So if you encounter one of these black screens or take a cannon and land on the inside of a rock or something like that, you'll automatically be black screen back to your ship, which effectively is just the game's way of respawning you because it doesn't have any other way to get you unstuck. Have you ever seen this text pop up on screen? This is the indication of a server merge. Let's say you're on a full server. Now over time, some of those ships are gonna leave. If you end up being one or two ships on a server, then that server is likely to merge into another one that has the corresponding two or three ships. This helps to keep a lot of players on the same server and helps bring a little more life to Sea of Thieves. Let's talk about the flag of the Reaper's Mark, also known as the OG Reaper flag. This is definitely one of the coolest flags you can find in the ship flag box. And a lot of new players run it thinking it looks cool without realizing what it actually does. When you equip this flag from the crow's nest, it does the same thing as joining the Reaper's faction would, which is mark you on the map for all the players to see. Players running this flag are usually doing one of three things. New players and don't know any better. A group of players making an attempt to all get on the same server. Or it could be a ship marking themselves for PvP, letting the entire server know that they're down to fight. Now let's talk a little strategy. The Death Spiral is next on the list, and usually in any game, you wouldn't want to be stuck in something called a Death Spiral. But in Sea of Thieves, no matter what ship you're in, it's a useful tactic. And this is how it works. First, you want to stop the other ship by sending a player to drop the anchor, or by using Chain Shot to knock their mast down, effectively stopping them dead in the water. Next, you want to set your ship in a rotation that is circling the ship that's dead in the water. And using this tactic has many advantages. First, by not just sitting still, you're able to hit the front, both sides and the back of the ship. Second, you're continuing to move, which makes it harder for the other ship to hit you with cannonballs because your angle is constantly changing. And also because you're continuing to move, it's gonna make it harder for the enemy players to get aboard on your ship. The Death Spiral is a great tactic and I recommend you use it whether you're solo or running a galleon with a crew. Next on the list, we're moving into something a little bit more mysterious. Something that players have been trying to figure out the answers for for a while. All over Sea of Thieves, we can find cave paintings and rock paintings and things like that obviously left by someone else. 
Now we use these paintings a lot in our riddle voyages, though nobody knows where they came from. The ancients seem to be the original inhabitants of Sea of Thieves. It seems like they had a vast knowledge about not only warfare, but also magic. They could have possibly been the first people to break through the shroud and make it to the Sea of Thieves. And they seem to have loved gold and the sea just as much as modern day pirates. Now the ancients, mysterious as they were, left us some clues across the Sea of Thieves, but their history and backstory seems to remain mostly shrouded. Now that we've talked about the ancients, let's talk about ancient skeletons. These guys are a little bit different than regular skeletons, and you can tell immediately by the sound that they make. When they spawn in, you can hear something that sounds like wind chimes and gold coins rattling around. If you hear this sound, stop everything you're doing, because killing an ancient skeleton will net you ancient coins and you can spend in the Pirate Emporium. All right, this is the part with spoilers. The main voyage taking place on Old Sailor's Isle, which is effectively the tutorial for Sea of Thieves, has a lot of secrets, including 10 books for commendations, and a secret trap door located in the ship, which can be accessed with a key found in the pond above the trap door. Finding this key and opening the trap door will get you a one-time gold bonus. Definitely worth going back and getting if you haven't already done it. Also, when you're doing the maiden voyage, make sure you keep the chest that you get all your equipment in. After you've left the maiden voyage, you can use this chest same as you would a collector's chest. Next item on the list is the Kraken spawn condition. In order to keep up with server stability, there are certain conditions that have to happen in order for the Kraken to actually spawn. And in order for this to happen, it's going to require absolutely no other world events going on at that time. So say for instance, you've just completed a skull fort. You loaded up all your loot and you don't see any other world events going on. No flame heart, no fort of fortune no red tornadoes, you might want to wait a minute before you shove off from your world event. Because as I said, if there are no world events up, then that means that the possibility for the Kraken to spawn is there. So if you don't see any other ships on the horizon, it's best to just sit tight and wait for another world event to pop up. You know, that is unless you want to fight the Kraken, and then by all means, sail out to sea. Remember earlier how we talked about harpooning objects? Well, Megalodon is objects. Harpooning the Megalodon can be a lot of fun, whether you're just fighting the Megalodon, or maybe you're in a combat PvP situation. Or even if you're not fighting it, harpooning the Megalodon can give you a lot of speed, or you can just, you know, see where it takes you. But be warned, harpooning the Meg has been known to cause some crazy things to happen, so... Alright, rounding up Tier 2 and the surface part of the iceberg, Mermaid Gems can be sold to anywhere. This of course excludes the Athena faction, and the Sea Dog faction, but for all your normal factions, you can use the Mermaid Gems for not only gold, but also reputation in that faction, whether or not you're running their emissary. A lot of players will leave Mermaid Gems just sitting on islands, but if you're pushing to get a little bit more reputation in a specific faction, then they're definitely worth holding on to. This finishes up Tier 2 of the Sea of Thieves Iceberg. Here's a link to Tier 1 if you haven't seen it already, and here's a link to Tier 3 as soon as it's up. And if you made it this far, comment your favorite Sea of Thieves fruit in the comments. It'll confuse some people. Take it easy. See you next time.